Today's video is sponsored by Native Sons Goods, makers of the highest quality woven guitar, bag, and camera straps you'll ever see. Native Sons straps are handmade one at a time in the USA with unparalleled love and care. Click the link in the description to check out their new expanded lineup featuring all new 3-inch guitar straps. And remember, when you support my sponsor, you support this channel, and I sure appreciate it. Hello lads and ladies, Brad the Guitologist here. My good friend Mark Olson from the Juggernaut Jug Band dropped by the other day and he brought a couple of his acoustic amplifiers that he said were cutting out on him. We're going to take a look at them for him and see what's going on with them. I suspect it might be a problem with solder joints, but we'll just have to see. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, stick around. You can't see the bottom of the board. Here's what we're looking at inside of one of these. All right. So you got you know your front board up here. Here's your little power board in the back. Here's your here's a power transformer. Mm -hmm. uh, then you've got another little breakout board over here. What's that? That's all effects loop stuff, and mm -hmm. foot switch stuff, headphones. Um, so we have to pull this front board because you can't get up underneath it to see. Mm -hmm. The most common things are usually like solder joints that go mm -hmm. bad on these. Sometimes mm -hmm. you can, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to not. Not have to completely. Yeah, not have to completely remove the. Right. Uh, it would have been real nice if they actually just ma made you a window underneath so you could lift it up and see the, you know what I mean, see the solder joints. Yeah. If they left you like a, a strip with no metal. Mm. That way you might have a good chance of fixing it on a gig, you know what I mean? Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah, yeah see what I mean? Like if you could, if this was all gone, you could just tilt this up and see at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Because like 90% of stuff that goes wrong on these are solder joints when yeah, it does. They don't build things to make them easy to work on. Mm -mm. I got that way with boats when I was a surveyor. You get these real fancy, expensive boats and I think, Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. And the fancier it was, and the more people wanted it, probably the bigger piece of shit it was. Kinda. Yeah. Yeah, there were a lot of boats. If you gave them to me, I'd just flip it for whatever. I mean, wouldn't matter. So what were you and doing? Very few boats had. You were a what? A surveyor? I was a marine surveyor. Marine surveyor. The last career I had. So you did you survey like the bottom of? Uh, well, the for, ocean or no for pre-purchase sales marine surveying involves uh shipping and uh vessels condition and value and oh damage. right on yeah because you used to sail insurance yeah yeah you used to yeah. sail uh, where all have you sailed to and from what are... um i started out when i when i taught school in charlotte i got a had a place on the lake and lived on a boat there and moved to the coast in Beaufort. Uh, mostly just sailed around there. I had, you know, ambitions in my youth to take off across oceans, but it involves a lot of lack of sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so I became more of the gentleman cruiser. So you were like in a North Carolina yeah. sort of area. Now we did one time we went to uh, uh, the Virgin Islands. Right. Charter, That's pretty cool. Sailed around. Oh, uh, 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 take me a while to get tired of doing that. Is that something you you feel? Could you go, could you go back into it? Is it something like riding a bike or oh, is yeah. it really? Oh sure. I would have thought there would be you know watch you kind of forget. You'd have to get the hang of it again or something. Oh, or... Well, you know, there's a lot of stuff you learn that's cool. That you know, I used to know like all the knots, and now I know like four or five because that's really all you need. Yeah. Uh, and navigation too. Uh, celestial navigation isn't that hard, but it's like balancing your checkbook math-wise, but you have to buy the books for it, you know, tell you where all the stars are. Yeah. The calculations. Uh, even just dead reckoning navigation is complicated if you do it precisely, but you discover that you just kind of you get, figure it out. Yeah. You know? it's like, do you think? Right. Do you think you just kind of you you could be pretty good at getting it rough at first, and then oh, just yeah. sort of 
yeah. getting the right general direction and sort of getting fine as you could see things. <laughs> Is that... I, I get comfortable offshore. Um, yeah. I mean, if I was on a boat with a compass or without one, I mean, I, it wouldn't bother me to be in the ocean and trying to find Spain or something. Like I say, the problem with ocean sailing is sleeping. Yeah. Because there's so much crap floating around out there you can run into, and there's uh, there's a lot of freighters that may or may not pay any attention to you. I think yeah. that's part of the Bermuda Triangle. It's just people getting run over by big boats that go, oops. Through the shipping <laughs> lane, yeah. Or don't even know it, or go, oh, I thought I saw a blip. Well, it's not yep. there anymore. Or somebody was drunk, and, that, and that's, yeah, they were asleep, There's that, passed yeah. out, yeah. Mm -hmm. Storm rolls up, and they're passed out, yeah. Well, people do stupid things. Mm. Uh, that was another thing. I had a $40,000 ocean cruising double ender, full keel. boat that was rated for ocean crossings but I would have had invested another 25 or 30 into it to really be prepared theoretically you go and with some luck you don't have a problem but there's a lot of problems you got to be ready for I mean just having a life you know a life boat aboard that you can deploy is Right. Ten thousand dollars, you know, and then it's like, do you want radar? You know, radar is real nice. Good radar detectors that wake you up if something paints you, you know, because they're coming at you. But I have heard some stories. I ran a marina in North Carolina for a number of years. It was a popular place to put in for cruisers because they come south of. Uh, Take batters mm -hmm. and then go south on down to the islands. If they were coming across from Europe, they'd put into Beaufort pretty, pretty regularly. A nice mix of people. And, and I'd hear some stories that make you wonder what goes on out there. Yeah, I'm just checking out and see what. what it looks like here. I'll, I would say probably finding a schematic for this is going to be hit and miss so I'm just kind of checking some solder connections first gee I didn't think to look at on mine I, I might have the paperwork on. I, I um, doubt they'd give you my filing systems and others. I doubt they'd give you the schematic for it a lot you know they might give you an owner's manual yeah like an owner's manual with no schematic man yeah I don't see uh, anything obvious here I would have thought that I would have seen like a, hmm. you know, something, something more obvious. My only so concern gonna, is that it's intermittent. Does it feel like your uh, any of your controls are dirty? Like when you turn on the, the you get a lot of that one. Uh, that the both of them seem like the main gain. The main gain knob. This one. Let's see which way am I looking at? When I plug. Yeah, that one. Yeah. In the same way on the other one. Do both channels do the same thing? I never use. That's the only channel I ever plug into. Okay. But we've got like no problem, right? Well, so far, but at the very least, I'm gonna. Usually when you have intermittent problems, it's a, it's either a bad solder joint, which I didn't see any bad solder joints visually, um, or it's a or it's a dirty pot or dirty control somewhere. Because mm -hmm. what can happen is you know little pieces, you might it might get good contact for a little while, but then it just for whatever reason you know uh, you know atoms moving around in the ether, <laughs> you, kind of, you know what I mean? Just mysterious thing. It'll it'll just start not getting a good connection because it's dirty, you yeah. know. So I'm going to clean the controls, whatever I do here. Do you use the chorus much? I'll, I don't. Not with this van. Okay. Does it does it happen with or without it? I have not used the chorus. Okay. On that, oh, okay. So on you don't use it. that unit myself. On my other one, I've 
I have when I played solo I would mess with effects but with the juggernauts I don't it's all straight up might use a little reverb now and again but that's about it I found to be Ooh. somewhat shy on company uh, hear that hear that start doing it I think it's that. Hear that? I'm hearing it. I think that's the source of your issue right there. What, what's happening is if you if you hit this, you're hitting the whole board. Okay. Because everything's connected. Right. So you're moving this also, and it probably is jarring everything so when you, you jar this. You think it's the input, but then it's, it's really moving something else. Something, that's that's why I'm yeah. That's why I'm looking down the guess. line here. Right. Yeah, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna clean all these controls and clean the jack, and I'll reflow some solder that looks suspect, and I think it should be fine. It's just uh, just dirty. I mean, you know, you see it's it's just a dirty older amp, you know. Yeah, I wouldn't be a bit surprised, dude, if that, if it's just a, you know, dirty pop. Do you have some spots on the board that look somewhat suspect? There's like a, I don't know, there's like some parts here that are covered in like, looks like callus, you know, they kind of calcified a little bit, and they're just dirty on the board, almost like, um, you probably play outdoors a lot, don't you? Well, I do, yeah. Too so, often. so a lot of this is going to be like impurities in the air, like humidity, because in Louisville, Kentucky in the summertime, man, if you're playing outside, it's, it's humid. Collects. Yeah, it does. And it, it, you know, if you're running an amp like this and it's so humid, you know, you, it, it can cause some issues. But you can see like the milky, there's a milkiness. I don't know if you can see it on this little screen here. Yes, I would prefer to a... stipulate that we only play in air-conditioned comfort, but that doesn't, <laughs> yeah. doesn't always work out. But there. see, there's like milkiness, and you can see where, you know, something has gotten on the board, right, like right oh, there, see uh -huh. there? And then over here, too, right there. There's well, like... You clean that with a Q-tip? Yeah, something? well, I'm going to clean it off with some alcohol and just kind of... Any spot that I see like that, I'll just clean it up, reflow the solder around it, and then clean up the controls and everything. And then I'll set them for the heart of the sun and then turn you loose. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll go... Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Man, I had somebody contact me. That reminds me that you're here. I had somebody contact me the other day because they had seen that video, I guess, that older video I did of your train set in your oh, basement. Yeah. Yeah. And they were like, uh, oh, I'm looking for a... What'd they say? They, it was something like... Uh, I'm looking for a train set that's set up that I can use in a video oh. or something. It was oh. like like that, and okay. I was like, uh, I was like, man, you know, they've they've torn that down since I made that video. They took all that stuff down. So mm -hmm. I said, you know, if they uh, if they put it back up or whatever, you know, I'm sure that was, they wouldn't that mind. That was interesting. That was a hell of a lot of fun for about a year. Uh, yeah. Um, then it got into just maintenance. <laughs> And that's not as much fun. Well, there was a big errant blob of solder on there, so I don't know what was up with that. Maybe somebody either been in here before. Or... Yeah, right now I'm just I'm just kind of cleaning this off so I can get a better look. But yeah, definitely, there's a little blob of solder right here too, hmm. an errant one. That probably. I don't know. I, don't, I doubt. There's a little. Would open that up and get there's it. a little errant blob. There's an errant blob. That might be from the from the manufacturing process, but. It could also be somebody got in here before and resoldered all these joints, but that's what I'm going to do here now too. Sometimes it's hard to see like a cold solder joint too, like you know your eyes just kind of deceive you when you're looking at this stuff. And so I'm I'm just going to go down the line and just resolder all of the solder joints for these controls because they're anything like this, man. It's automatically suspect because they really shouldn't put controls on a board like this because they'll flex. Because that's the only thing really holding it to the front. They're relying on the solder to hold the board. Okay, so Mark had to take off, so we're going to finish this up here alone. And yeah, I just had some, I don't know, I had some goop on some of these. There's like it's like a bit, a bit of gunk up here. I don't know if that's because, again, impurities in the air. You know, Louisville summer heat and humidity. You've got the amp on, and it maybe attracts some impurities. That's, that's one possibility. But it also could just be something got spilled in here at one time, you know, when maybe it was sitting in the 
truck or something and I don't know something leaked down in there either way we're gonna try to clean most of this stuff up this thing has a date on it of 2013 I also want to pop this connector off of there and just make sure that the pins are clean on that. I was in here too I was kind of looking back here um, at this backboard this is the power section and uh, it is very unlikely anything in the power section because he did say he could wiggle his instrument cable and the problem would go away so it's got to be somewhere on this front board uh, but just you know while we're in an amp like this we definitely want to take a look at the backboard and see if there's anything that we can well first of all you see this big power resistor right here there's a there's a little cap it's leaning right up against that so that's not good we'll lean that away you don't want that cap heating up for no good reason I mean that probably wasn't causing the prob the issue <clears throat> at hand but it just doesn't hurt to look at look for things like that look at the the caps um, these caps usually you can tell if they're starting to go because they'll start bulging at the top nine times out of ten and at least for right now they look good like I said, this amp is only from 2013, so I wouldn't expect the caps to be an issue. They look like they're they look like they're probably okay caps. Okay, all the controls are clean, and I want to clean these jacks. Um, uh, the owner of this amp and Mark both smoke, so that's, uh, there's, you know, uh, smoking is, is hard on your equipment. It, uh, all the smoke and everything, the, the tar and everything that's released in, with the smoke, you know, it kind of settles and creates a film uh, on electronics. So if you store your electronics in your smoker, uh, try to store them somewhere away from where you smoke. That way they, they just don't get, you know, they don't get icky. Uh, and that can cause problems, man. You can get all kinds of issues just from, uh, you know, having tar and stuff all over your equipment. Also, there's a there's a ground cable here that's tied to the chassis in it. I just want to make sure that it's uh, good and secure, and it is. So I just want to come down through here and just hit hit all of the uh, spots where the controls link up. But yeah, you can see why generally I refrain from taking stuff like this in because you got all this uh, surface mounted stuff, which, you know, I can work with, but uh, it takes a lot more effort and setup on my part. I'm really set up for 
you know, vintage amps here at this station. I'm not set up to, to take uh, surface mount components on and off, really. So, like I said, I could do it. It's just I'm not really set up for it. So it would take some doing and, uh, you know, and the other thing about this stuff is that it tends to be so cheaply made. Um, it's just becomes throwaway equipment because of how cheaply made it is. It's almost cheaper to go buy a new one than it is to have one worked on. So, okay. One thing I have noticed is that, you know, obviously you leave a other channel up. Even if you're using this second channel, it's going to introduce some noise, maybe some crackle pops. Anything that's going on in the first channel will be introduced. So you want to make sure you turn that all the way down, turn the gain all the way down so it's just cutting everything out. Turn all the controls actually for this channel all the way down if you're not using it. You should get in the habit of doing that with uh, any amp that you use. If you don't use the, you know, one of the channels, turn all the controls for that channel down so it's just not introducing any... Uh, unnecessary noise but yeah I, I you know this is this is one of those intermittent problems um, I'm gonna l leave it on for a little while I'm gonna just turn it up so I can kind of hear it hiss at me yeah I'll just leave it up for a little while leave it on and I just kind of go about my business here I'm gonna do some other things and uh, yeah I think that's this one knocked out so let's uh, we'll check out the other one but I, like I said I'm gonna leave this on maybe about a half an hour or so Okay, so here's amp number two up on the bench and ready to be looked at. And this thing, I can already tell, is fairly filthy. So I'm guessing that there's going to be some issues with uh, with dirt. You know, again, dirt, probably dirty controls, especially since all the controls face upward on this one. We might have the same sort of problem here. And I've got a got a little friend here. He's going to help me out. Hey, Ivy. Hey, Ivy. Hey, you going to help me out? Yes? You gonna help me? Okay, you can help me. What are you watching? Um, I want to PJ Masks. PJ Masks? Mm -hmm. Oh, can cool. Can next one, please? Yes, okay. Say bye. Bye. Okay, so you guys will have to excuse some of the background noise there. Uh, I've got my helper in the room with me. We're gonna turn this on and see if we can reproduce the problem so it's on right now. Okay, so right off the bat, yeah, let, yeah, that one definitely has a bad input jack. So we'll pull the board and do some solder. That's probably broken solder joints right there. the solder joints here on the the front panel I mean it's you can just kind of tell how cheaply made this thing is this is all you know lead it's all really crappy lead free solder the I mean you've got I don't know what what they've done this for I think they're doing this to try to keep the noise down look they've slathered this and I guess that's, is that hot, I think that's hot glue to try to keep the noise down, to keep this thing from rattling around. Which is, that's just a weird, that's weird. You've got also some, uh, maybe it's silicone, because they've got another one. Look at this, just kind of slathered in silicone on the board. <laughs> and it's attached to this wire here, it's like an afterthought, you know. It's like, oh, what are we going to do with this resistor? I don't know, maybe we'll just slather it in silicone and put it put it there so that's somewhat interesting and, and the other end of it's going to a to ground there so I don't know what that is but it's certainly interesting um, you know we've got a couple places where we've got contacts like this we'll probably probably take these off and sort of clean those or just make sure that they're you know getting good contact on all those but I mean the problem was with that uh, guitar jack and the guitar jack is right there and um, you know there are the solder joints for that jack and I don't see any issues with the solder joints but sometimes you can't tell it until you get 
until you start wiggling it. So I'm going to plug something into it here. Plug something in. And we'll wiggle the jack. I think it's just bad contacts inside the jack. I think it's just a... I think it's just a really shitty jack. And the pro... Well, the problem with this is the way that it's in here, this whole board... So once again, you know, every one of these will have to come off. Uh, the whole board should come out, but we've got back here on the back, we've got this heat sink. Um, and this is going to have to come off also with the board. And we've got one end of it here that's under all this silicone, so all that's going to have to come, I guess, off of there to get the board out, possibly. So, yeah, this is, I mean, you got up in there. What is that? that's kind of silicone to the chassis yeah I don't know man this is all kind of it's all a bit sketchy it's really just cheaply made it's not not a very good amplifier you know not not high quality but we'll, we'll do our best with it um, but I'm certain I, this might actually be a case where I can just I might even be able to just clean this jack hopefully without taking this all out if I have to take this all out, it's going to really suck, but I'm going to try to, like I said, this jack has got a lot of play in it, and just not a high quality part, but I'm going to spray it and see if we can't get it to, uh, you know, clean up. Maybe it's just a cleaning issue. It's better way better in fact it's not doing it at all when I wiggle this around so that's way better I'm gonna go ahead and spray it a couple more times and just get it as clean as I possibly can I think that's got this problem solved um, I am going to recommend that anytime he plugs this thing in just wind it around the handle a couple times and then plug it in that way if you pull on it you're pulling on the handle and not the jack so That'll keep you from, you know, screwing up this jack because it's not a high quality part and it's not really a high quality amp. So that's just going to, you know, prolong the useful life of the amp if you're not just jerking on that cable all the time. So, okay, so this is what I'm talking about. Just, you know, using the handle of the amp to take the strain off is a really good idea. With these cheap amps like this, man, the, the input jacks are so bad on a lot of them. This one included that it just... That, that's just a good idea to do something like that to take the strain off. Mm -hmm. 